In this video, I'm going to talk about WAC, Weighted Average Cost of Capital. Hi, I'm the Commerce Specialist. Welcome to my channel, uh, where you'll find videos covering learning outcomes of various academic and professional qualifications, including life-changing business ideas and hacks. A humble and gentle reminder, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, press the bell notification button so that you get my videos on a timely basis and share my video with as many people as you can. Thank you very much in advance. As the name says, cost of capital. This means every time a business needs money, whether it is coming from loans, which is debt, or it is coming from the owners, which is equity, it has a cost. What does this mean? This means like if you take a loan from bank, you have to pay interest. That's the cost of the loan. If you sell shares, whether to preference shareholders or ordinary shareholders, you got to pay dividend. So dividend is the cost of selling shares which you have to pay the shareholders ultimately and interest is the cost on bonds obviously a company borrows they have to pay interest on that so what is the meaning of weight weight means let's assume the debt of a company is 40 million and equity including ordinary and preference shares is 60 million so total capital is 100 million so in 100 million how much is debt 40% which is 40 million and how much is equity 60% which is 60 million out of 100 million so when we say weighted average cost of capital we are looking at the cost of each component of finance which is debt and equity and we are also looking at its weight in the total capital structure so to explain you capital structure is like this most of you all have uh, most of you all understand this assets equal liabilities plus capital so if a company has total assets of 100 and liability which is debt is 20 and capital which is equity is 80 so this is known as capital structure so if I take it in terms of percentage this is 100 this is 20 and this is 80 percent okay so this is capital structure the composition of total asset this is the capital structure and this is also the weight what weight debt has in total assets 20 percent what weight, uh, weight capital has equity has in uh, total assets is 80 percent so you understand what is meant by weight once we have weight we just multiply it by the cost of capital but it's not that simple so once we have the weights of individual sources of funds we just multiply it by the respective cost we will get the weighted average cost of capital but having said that there are many things you need to consider let's jump into the discussion of weighted average cost of capital which generally we call WAC now I want you to focus on the details given here uh, we have a question here uh, of Zorro LLC they have 3% bonds the there are 1000 bonds each bond has a power value which is also known as the face value or you can call it as the power value of 1000 so when you multiply 1000 by 1000 you get 1 million you have 4% preferred stock how many number of shares there are 12,000 shares of preferred stock each stock has a face value power value of 25 so 12,000 into 25 will give you 300,000 company also has common stock 60,000 shares ordinary shares each share has a power value of 2 you multiply you get 120 you have additional paid in capital additional paid in capital is also known as share premium which is 400,000 and you got some balance in the retail earning which is 180,000 when you add all of them you get total equity which is 2 million please please pay attention here we got power value of bonds power value of preference stock and power value of common stock when we are calculating weighted average cost of capital we need market value not power value so please keep that in mind the other thing is as I told you earlier we need the weights and we also need the cost so the first step is what we're going to do is these capital which we have specifically bonds preference shares and ordinary shares we are going to convert them into the market value these are values based on par which is the face value so what I'm going to do here is I'm writing bonds the number of bonds we have 1000 
and details is given here bond will mature in five years that's okay and has a market interest rate of six percent okay the current market value of each bond is nine hundred and sixty dollars so we'll talk about this six percent and five years that is not relevant at the moment market value of bond is very much relevant so i'm going to multiply this by nine hundred and sixty dollars so as a result i'm going to get nine hundred and sixty thousand now this is the market value of bonds likewise i'm going to pick up preferred shares the number of shares which are 12,000 shares and I'm going to multiply by the market value and market value of preferred shares is 28 so I multiplied by 28 I will get an amount that I'm going to write here likewise I'm looking at common shares which is the ordinary shares or common equity number of shares 60,000 and market value being $10 here so when you multiply it by 10, this is pretty simple. You get 600,000 and 28 into 12,000 will give you 336,000. The total amount comes to 1,896,000. And this is, again, please remember, this is on market value. We need to work out the weights. Weights is that mean this is going to be 100%. So 960 is what percentage of 1,896,000? So let's work it out. 960,000 divided by 1,896,123. So that gives me the weight of... And if I multiply by 100, it will come 50.63. I'm just writing here at 0 0.5063. Okay, 336,000 is what percentage of this amount? So 336 divided by 1,896,000, you will get 0 0.1772. Actually, this is 17.72. If you multiply by 100, it will be 17%. Actually, this is 17.72. If you multiply by 100, you'll get 17.72%. Okay, what is this 600,000 as a percentage of 1,896,000? 600,000 divided by 1,896,000 uh, will give you around 31%, which is 0 0.3165. Now life will be very easy if we also have the cost. So after which we need the cost of each source, which we don't know at the moment. So here we are going to learn how to calculate cost of each source for calculating weighted average cost of capital. So first of all, we are trying to calculate cost of debt, which is cost of bonds. It's like this, cost of debt is equal to cost into one minus the tax rate. This 3% which is given at the bond is actually the coupon interest rate, the interest which is given to the bondholders. What we need to calculate weighted average cost of capital is the market interest rate, which is given to us as 6%. So in order to calculate cost of debt, which is cost of bond, the market rate is 6%, which is 0 0.06. We have to multiply 1 is by default in the formula. Tax rate is given as 40%. So 40% is 0 0.4. So this becomes 0 0.06 into 1 minus... 0.4 is 0 0.6 so when you multiply this you will get the cost of debt is 0 0.036 and now when you multiply by 100 you will get 3.6 percent so i can write it here 3.6 percent or i can write 0 0.036 or 3.6 it's the same so consistency purposes because this is not in percentage in decimals i am also writing in decimal 0 0.036 Cost of debt is done. Now let's talk about the cost of preference shares. Now here it says 4% preferred stock. This 4% is actually the dividend we are paying on the preferred stock. Now we are looking at cost of preference shares. The cost is actually annual cash flow divided by the market price per share. So here when I say annual cash flow, 
what is the cash flow relevant to preferred stock? It is the dividend. Okay. So if you look at dividend, that is 4%. 4% of 25. If I work out 4% of the par value of preferred stock, $25, that will give me $1. So annual cash flow in the form of dividend, we will get, if you buy preference stock, you keep getting $1 as dividend. And what is the market price of preference stock? 28. So you divide by 28 and multiply by 100. So this will give you the cost of preference shares. You will get it as 3.57%. So 3.57 is actually 0.0357. What we are left with is we need to know the cost of common shares including retained earning. So what we do is uh, we are looking at cost of retained earning which is including common equity. So the cost of retained earning is actually like this d1 upon po plus g now what does this mean i have made a video on valuation of shares in which i have discussed the dividend growth model i want you to watch that video so that you understand how uh, dividend growth model is used to calculate cost of retain earning and cost of common equity okay so this d1 means the dividend of next year Okay, G is the growth rate and PO is the market price of common stock. So if you look at the question, it says common stock has a market value of 10. So I'm going to put the number here. The market price denominator is $10. All right. And it says last year the dividend paid was $4 and it is expected to grow at the rate of 5%. So the growth rate I have here is 5% is 0 0.05 and D1 is the last year dividend multiplied by the growth rate. So actually D1 is like this. D1 is dividend multiplied by the growth rate. So last year dividend was 4% and it is growing by 5% so I can multiply it by 1.05. So when you multiply 4 into 1.05 you'll get 4.2. So D1 comes to 4.2. So when you solve all this, 4.7%. So 4.7% basically means 0 0.047. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, what we do is we have weighted average cost of capital. What you're going to do is you multiply these two. 0 0.5063 into this, you will get an amount. 0 0.1772 into this, you will get an amount. 0 0.3165 into this, you will get an amount. When you add all of them and multiply by 100, you will get 3.93%. And that's your weighted average cost of capital. So if I give you a quick recap, you were given the uh, detail of equities. What we have done is, we have taken bonds, preference shares and common stock and found their market value by multiplying the number of bonds by the market value, the number of preference shares by the market value, the number of common shares by the market value. Once we get the market value, you find the weights. How? 960 divided by 1896, you get 0.5. 336 is what percentage of this? 0.177. 600 is what percentage of this? This. Once you got the weight, now we are moving on to calculate the cost. So cost of debt is always after tax cost of debt. Before tax cost of debt is 6%, when you multiply by 1 minus tax, you will get after tax cost of debt, which is 3.6%. The cost of preference shares is basically dividend per preference shares divided by the market price. So dividend divided by market price is 3.57, which is this amount. Cost of ordinary shares including retain earning is calculated using dividend growth model. And as I told you, I've already made a video which tells you how to use dividend growth model to calculate cost of ordinary shares. So the formula is D1 upon P0 into G, where G is the growth in the dividend, P0 
P0 is the market price per share and D1 is the last year dividend multiplied by the growth rate which is 4.2. So 4.2 is the next dividend divided by market price plus the growth rate gives you the cost of uh, retail earnings including ordinary shares which is 4.7. Now once you have the weights and you have the cost multiply all add them up multiply by 100 you get 3.93 which is your weighted average cost of capital guys if you have any questions relating to weighted average cost of capital please feel free to leave a comment i will reply to as usual if you are not yet subscribed please subscribe my channel press the bell notification button so that you get my videos on a timely basis if you like this video please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit thank you so very much for your precious time love you all